Hello, I'm Harry Thibodeau, and I welcome our global audience to the Jupiter Launch Center in Kourou. So, dear uh, customers and partners, ladies and gentlemen, Ariane Space is delighted to welcome you from the Guyana Space Center for this new Ariane 5 mission, which is the fifth of the year with our uh, heavy white vehicle. So tonight, as you know, we are going to launch two key satellites for two close customers. First, SkyMaster 2 for the Australian National Broadband Network, operator NBN. The satellite has been manufactured by our long-standing partner, SSL. Second satellite to be launched tonight, GSAT-18, operated and manufactured by the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. So I want for sure to thank NBN and ISRO for your trust. After one day postponement due to strong altitude winds, all today's operation linked to the final countdown went well. The launcher, the satellites, and the bases are now ready. The weather is green. We should be in a position to launch in a few minutes at 5.30 p.m. We have a launch window which will last one hour and 24 minutes. The overall performance to GTO required for this launch is 10 ton, 663 kilograms. As you know, the liftoff occurs seven seconds after the H0 at the initiation of the solid booster. Ariane 5 will then head towards the east to separate the satellites on an elliptical orbit inclined at six degrees with respect to the equatorial plan. The perigee altitude will be 250 kilometers and the apogee 35,786 kilometers. SkyMaster 2 will, two, sorry, SkyMaster 2, <laughs> difficult to speak real English, will separate first at H0 plus 18, plus 28 minutes. GSAT 18 will then separate 32 minutes after the H0. So our launch is now just a few minutes away. Go Ariane 5, go SkyMaster 2 and GSAT 18. And of course, enjoy the show. Thank you. of tonight's uh, broadcast, the awesome Ariane 5. What an incredible sight, this uh, rocket towers over the Amazon jungle. It's uh, late afternoon here in uh, Kourou, and uh, we're about uh, 500 kilometers north of the equator. Perfect weather. It has been since I arrived in Kourou last Thursday. Not a drop of rain. On the right, you see the status panel. Each of those components must remain green, otherwise we can't launch. And the countdown will be halted. They include the rocket, the satellites, the launch pad, the range, safety, weather, etc. The Ariane 5 is the biggest rocket uh, that we launch here at Kourou, tipping the scales at 780 tons. The launcher stands 55 meters tall. Upper passenger tonight is SkyMaster 2 for NBN, weighing 6.3 tons. It's separated first. Lower passenger, GSAT 18. And let's hear more about SkyMaster right now. Welcome to the Guayana Space Center. The Ariane 5 flight VA231 will embark in its upper position, SkyMaster 2, the second satellite to be launched by Ariane Space for the Australian wholesaler NBN after the launch last year of SkyMaster 1. As the name of satellites indicate, it will master or bring Australian together by providing fast broadband services to remote and regional areas. SkyMaster 2 is based on the well-proven 1300 bus of SSL. It will be the 59th satellite of this manufacturer to be orbited by Ariane Space, and there are four more in our backlog. We would like to thank NBN and the Australian government for their confidence in Ariane Space, and we look forward to continuing this partnership for the launch of future Australian satellites. And we're back at Jupiter, all is green, and uh, it's a perfect evening here to fly. The mission directors uh, tonight, Bertiz Romano for SkyMaster 2 and Christophe Bordeaux for GSAT 18. Many years of hard work by them and their teams have brought us to uh, where we are tonight. There's Julia Dickinson from NBN. 
Closing in on nine minutes now from the dramatic launch of the satellites for NBN mission number two. Uh, we launched SkyMuster 1 uh, back in uh, last September. That historic satellite already bringing broadband services to all of Australia. For ISRO, tonight marks the 20th time they've entrusted a satellite uh, for us to launch. Two more of them go up in 2000. 17. And time now to hear more about GSAT 18. The A231 will deliver to orbit two prestigious satellites, SkyMaster 2 for Australia and GSAT 18 for India. Although the GSAT 18 launch services agreement was signed between ISRO and Ariane Espace, Less than one year ago, the mission integration activities went very smoothly since the spacecraft bus, an I-3K, is very well known at Ariane Space as this is the eighth satellite of this series to be launched on Ariane after the launching of uh, GSAT-15 one year ago. In 2017, Ariane Space will launch GSAT-17, the sister ship of GSAT-18, and has recently been entrusted with the launching of GSAT-11, the first spacecraft in the new I-6K bus series. GSAT-11 will also be launched next year. We are therefore very proud and honoured to be hands part of the Indian space programme success story. So thank you to the ISRO team here in Kourou and also in Bangalore for the great job that we have carried out together throughout this programme. All the best to JSAT 18. We're under the eight minute mark now here in Kourou. The flight directorate for tonight's mission, the top officials responsible for the launch, headed up by Stefan Israel, chairman and CEO of Ariane Space. We also see Roland Lagier, the senior VP of engineering for Ariane Space. They and hundreds of other dedicated professionals here at the Guyana Space Center referred to as CSG, are focused on one mission, safely delivering SkyMaster 2 for NBN, GSAT 18 for ISRO. Shortly, we will hear the seven-minute mark the from the DDO. And here it comes. Top, Azero, minus seven minutes. The Ariane 5 ECA has uh, now begun the synchronized sequence. Computers are taking uh, control and are pouring over the data to make sure everything is fine. But, of course, at any time, uh, human hands can intercede and stop the countdown. Hundreds of skilled technicians have uh, spent uh, a long time uh, working uh, at CSG to get us to this point. Here's the launch campaign. The Ariane 231 launch campaign enters today in its final phase with a go given by the launch readiness review. This step is the outcome of preparation of the launcher begun at the integration building on May 18. After completion of assembly and associated control on electrical and propulsion subsystem, the launcher was technically accepted and put in safe mode on June 21st. On August 30th, the SkyMaster 2 immediately transferred to the S5C clean room. Its compatibility with flight adapter was confirmed. After successful completion of electrical and mechanical tests, the satellite was transferred into the fueling room where the flight tanks were filled from September 14 to 16. GSAT 18 arrived on May 30th and directly transferred to the S5C. It is made in a lower position on the launcher. Mechanical and electrical operations began with the compatibility test with the flight adapter on June 1st. Power tests were also conducted with illumination of the solar panel. GSAT-18 was transferred to the filling room, and from September 13 to 16, the tanks were filled. On September 13, the restart of the launcher campaign was cleared with a transfer to a final assembly building and the beginning of the combined operation with launcher and satellites. The assembly of the two satellites on board was performed and the launcher was put in the flight configuration. The final condon operations will conclude the fifth Ariane 5 launch campaign of the year. I want to warmly thank all the launcher team for its involvement in the preparation of this mission. And we're back at uh, Jupiter. All is green. Four and a half minutes now away from the 88th Ariane 5 and uh, her beginning her heavy lift campaign tonight. The Ariane 5 has a big job ahead of her. NBN SkyMaster 2 weighs in at 6,405 kilograms. 
GSAT 18 at 3404. Add that to the SILDA and other support structures, and they top out at 10.6 metric tons, all about to ride a pillar of flames into the Amazon sky. And there again, you uh, see the... Uh, uh, the launch status panel, everything is green. And, of course, we like to say here in Corvu, green means go. And uh, we are set to roll. Another place very busy right now is the Launch Control Center. We call it CDL3. There, the launch management teams are working on the direction of the launch operations manager, the COIL. Four teams working together tonight, one responsible for launch operations, a second for flight readiness review of the Ariane 5 ECA, a third follows the countdown from a quality point of view, ensuring it adheres to the standards, and the fourth oversees safety of people and facilities in the launch zone. In all, about 100 people work there. They are extremely close to the rocket. They're only three kilometers away. I've been there a few times. The walls are literally one meter thick to uh, protect them at that close range. These teams carry out all of the uh, checks and the very validations right down to liftoff. Everything has to be perfect or we don't go. Once the launcher has left the pad, the work of the CDL-3 is done. Again, everything remains green. As I mentioned earlier, the 88th time we've flown an Ariane 5. Uh, they have uh, been a total of uh, 280 launches total here from Kourou. Tonight, Ariane Space will loft its 542nd and 543rd satellites into orbit. That record of success, a tribute to the thousands of dedicated employees, not only here in French Guiana, but around the world. Their focus on absolutely the smallest detail has earned Ariane 5 its rightful place in the history books as one of the best launch vehicles ever to leave planet Earth. And at uh, two minutes before the launch tonight, we see those two arms surrounding the Ariane 5 in Kourou. They're called the Bra. They're not holding the 780-ton rocket upright. That's gravity's job. The arms are used to support the fuel lines that top off the liquid propellants. We continue topping them off till just before launch. It's really uh, cold fuel, hot here in Kourou. Fuel boils off, so we have to keep topping them off. Closing in on the last minute before the countdown, the VIPs heading now to the balconies to watch uh, they have a great view as the crow flies. We are 13 kilometers away from the Ariane 5 launch site. And we're only seconds away from the DDO announcing the one-minute mark. We will be 60 Attention seconds DDO. away from lighting this candle and sending the Ariane 5 on her way. Top. A zero one minute. And at the uh, one minute mark, we welcome everybody around the world uh, viewing this live webcast on arianspace.com. Greetings to our friends watching at Airbus Defense and Space in Europe, NBN at their headquarters in Australia, uh, SSL in Palo Alto, California, ISRO in India, Kness and in Arian Space in Paris, and all of our industry partners across Europe. A special hello tonight to the 700 Australians whose pictures are on the fairing at the Arian 5. You are heading into space just seconds from now. Only moments to go. Here it is, the famous countdown in French from Kourou, French Guiana. Attention the video, attention for the decompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. Allumage Vulcain. Allumage AP, décollage. Les paramètres à bord sont nominaux.
It's an e-ticket ride tonight as we rumble the Amazon jungle. The mighty Aryan 5 ECA roars into the sky over Koru. 49 seconds into the flight, Arian 5 has already broken the sound barrier here in Koru. The massive Jupiter facility will be shaking momentarily as the launcher roars out over Devil's Island, made famous by the movie Papillon. 1,300 tons of thrust breaking the Arian 5. Free from the Earth's gravity, and look at those pictures. 90% of that power coming from the two boosters, each one 31 meters tall, and burning 240 tons of solid propellant in two minutes. More than two tons per second. Now we feel the rumble here at Jupiter. When the boosters have done their job in less than a minute from now, Arion uh, will be 70 kilometers in the sky, uh, traveling at more than a mile a second, faster than a bullet. You may recall that uh, we had a green screen on uh, uh, before launch. We're going to see the numbers uh, for the mission begin to appear on the bottom of the screen. But right now, enjoy that video. The data is coming to us from Gilat, a tracking station on a big the hill. Behind us, two minutes into the flight, look at the pictures as Ariane 5 roars into the sky over Koru. All is uh, going green. The next big thing will be the burnout and the jettison of the twin solid rocket boosters. That will occur about three seconds from right now. Separation des étages d'accélération à poudre. And look at that picture as you can see them clearly, the two boosters falling away and the main core, the white light, that's the Ariane 5 and our two passengers making its way into the heavens. The boosters have done their job, we don't need them anymore and uh, they will fall into uh, the ocean. We've lost 600 tons in just two minutes. The Ariane 5 weighs about 180 tons now. As Ariane gets lighter, it goes faster. And there, that white spot of light in the middle of the screen, that is our two valuable passengers and the Ariane 5 at ECA. And all is going well at three minutes and eight seconds into the mission. Uh, the next uh, big event will be the jettisoning of the fairing. It will be gone in just a few seconds. Separation de la coiffe. And there it is. We watched the video so long that uh, we almost saw that occur. Uh, its job is done. It uh, has fallen off about 100 kilometers into the sky. That's 17 meter fairing. We have lost 2.4 tons again. And again, the DDO says everything is normal. Uh, the launcher now 121 kilometers into the sky. There's Bruno Girard, Vice President of Arian Space, uh, CSG. And uh, then uh, Joel Donadel. He is uh, the head of ESA's uh, Koru office. And a special welcome uh, to uh, Didier Favre, the new head of CSG for Kness. The main cryogenic stage, or the EPC, is now burning. It burns for about the nine minutes. Luminal. The EPC is really just a huge fuel tank. It carries 150 tons of liquid oxygen, 25 tons of liquid hydrogen. That engine is gulping 320 kilograms, about 700 pounds of fuel every second, 500 times more than a jet engine. I have absolutely no idea what the fuel mileage is for the Ariane 5, but it's built for speed and power, and in that arena, nobody cares about fuel mileage. And uh, I'm just uh, happy they're not dinging my credit card to fill that baby up with fuel. Uh, and this is the fifth Ariane 5 launch of 2016. As we uh, watch, we see on the screen the tracking stations. We'll talk more about them in a few moments. We began the year with a single satellite launch on 27 January for Ariane 5. 9th of March, we did it again. We also had dual launches on 18th June, 18 of June, that's the last time I was here, and on the 24th of August. Plans call for the Ariane 5 to fly two more missions before the end of 2016. 
Tonight will be the 74th success in a row for the Aryan Five. Look at the beautiful replay. Five and a half minutes ago, the Aryan Five roared off the pad. Well, tonight we will tie the record of its predecessor, the Aryan Four. Uh, while both of them are now tied, the Aryan Five has a dramatic advantage because of its size and power. It has successfully launched 24 more payloads, totaling almost 350,000 kilos more than uh, the historic Ariane 4 rocket. We're right on track, and uh, the rocket is uh, now 160 kilometers above Earth. Look at that replay again, just riding that pillar of power and the flames off the pad here at uh, Corvu. The final target number for speed tonight, by the way, 9.3 kilometers per second. A few more interesting uh, facts uh, for you. NBN SkyMaster 2 and GSAT 18 represent the 533rd and 534th satellites to be launched by Arian Space. They are also the 123rd and 124th satellites to go into geostationary transfer orbit by the workhorse of the fleet. That's the Arian 5 that debuted here in 2002. Back at Jupiter, more of the VIPs here in uh, the hall. All continues to go well. Uh, very shortly, the launcher will be acquired by the Natal tracking station in Brazil. Tonight, we use Galliet, uh, which is here in the cover, on a big hill right behind us. Natal in Brazil, a station on Ascension Island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and then Lieberville on the west coast of Africa, and Malindi, Kenya, on the east coast of Africa. And coming up in about 10 seconds, uh, we will be picked up by that tracking station in Natal, Brazil. Everything is going perfect right down know. the middle of that curve that you see in the upper right-hand side. Arian sends data to uh, these ground stations, tells us how the flight is progressing in real time. Later, engineers are going to pour over every single bit of that data to determine exactly how the vehicle performed every step of the way. It's one of the secrets behind the success of Arian Space. The teams evaluate every aspect of every mission, ensuring that every technical parameter was met, sharing that data full transparency with their customers and allowing them to learn each and every time more about this incredibly complex machine, the Ariane 5 ECA, again, that tonight will fly its 74th successful You hear that everything is going normally. Next major event, the cutoff of the main stage of the EPC. That'll happen uh, about 10 seconds from right now. You'll hear the DDO make uh, that call, and we'll wait for that. And there it is. The main stage has now completed its job. It will drop EPC. away and fall into the ocean off Africa. The upper stage, or the EPC, will now burn for nearly 16 minutes. 151 kilometers into the sky, almost 7 kilometers per second. Several of the key personnel and the VIPs that are here in the Jupiter Auditorium located right below my broadcast location. They've been here for a couple of days now. The staff of Arian Space has really rolled the red carpet out for them, and they've been touring the space base in the local area. Tonight they had the best seat for uh, the launch. Those VIPs have traveled a long way to get here. We told you earlier uh, that uh, we're about 500 kilometers north of the equator in the Amazon rainforest. Why are we here? Simple physics. The Earth spins faster at the equator than it does at, say, the Kennedy Space Center in the Florida. And that allows the satellite operators, in many cases, to launch heavier payloads, put more fuel on their satellites, increase the operational life, and that means more profits uh, for them. That's why we're the undisputed champion of the commercial launch industry. Here's more about GSAT-18.
With GSAT-18, ISRO is once again poised for yet another major launch event. This new communication satellite will soon roar into space. The GSAT-18 will support existing communication services such as television, telecommunication, VSAT and DSNG services in the country. GSAT-18 is built by ISRO on its proven I3K bus. It has 48 communication transponders in C, extended C and KU band of frequencies. This satellite will provide C-band service to Indian mainland, Andaman Nicobar and Lakshadweep islands, whereas the KU band service will cover Indian mainland and Andaman Nicobar islands. Like all of ISRO's spacecraft, teams from all centers of ISRO have worked closely together on the GSAT-18 program. The communication payloads were realized at Space Application Center at Ahmedabad. ISRO Satellite Center Isaac at Bengaluru was responsible for the spacecraft bus, including fabrication of mainframe electronic packages and the integration of the spacecraft. Other ISRO centers like LPSC delivered propellant and propulsion system components. VSSC at Tiruvannandapuram supplied all the composite elements like antennae, yokes and substrates for solar panels and pyros. Sensor elements were delivered by LEOS and IISU provided inertial systems elements. Master control facility at Hassan will provide the ground station support from the launch time till the end of life of spacecraft. The satellite approximately weighs 3,400 kilograms and contains almost 1,920 kilograms of propellant which will keep it operational for at least 15 years. Initially, the launch vehicle places the satellite in a highly elongated geosynchronous transfer orbit. At the moment of the highest distance from Earth, the apogee boost motor of the satellite is precisely fired to achieve a circular geosynchronous orbit. Two deployable dual-gridded reflectors, DGR, are mounted on the east and west sides of the spacecraft for communication. A 1.2-meter body-mounted antenna is fixed on the Earth viewing side. The two solar panels on the satellite convert solar energy into electrical power needed to run all onboard systems. During eclipses, when the spacecraft passes through the Earth's shadow, all electrical loads are managed using the onboard lithium-ion batteries. The spacecraft is now ready for launch on board the Ariane 5 launcher of the European Space Agency, French Guiana. The GSAT-18 will provide the current communication services such as television, telecommunication, VSAT and DSNG services to support the nation's communication needs. And we're back at Jupiter Live, and during the video, the Ariane 5 ECA and its two passengers were acquired by the Ascension Island tracking station, and all is going well. As I mentioned, ISRO is one of Ariane Space's oldest and most trusted customers. This is the 20th time that they have allowed us to place a satellite into orbit. The relationship dates back to 1981 when Ariane Flight L03 placed the experimental Apple satellite into space for ISRO. 86% of all ISRO contracts open to foreign competition have been awarded to Ariane Space. ISRO is a loyal customer indeed. We will launch two more of their satellites in 2017. Everything going perfect at 15.15 into uh, the mission, right down uh, the middle of the track, as they say, uh, for the Ariane 5 ECA. Here's more news from ISRO. ISRO, Ariane Space, and CSD have a long-lasting relationship 
and that provided an excellent backdrop for a very smooth conduct of launch base operations. The campaign was carried out over two phases and in both the phases the activities were carried out in a very cordial environment without any incident or non-conformances which speaks about high professionalism of the teams involved from all the three great organizations. Apart from official engagements, the teams also could interact at personal level and had great cultural exchanges which helps in making the official work that much easier. Minutes before the separation, our spacecraft control center at MCF Hassan will acquire the signal and the spacecraft is oriented to generate the power required for transfer orbit operations. Subsequently, orbit raising maneuvers are carried out to place the spacecraft in its final geosynchronous orbit. This will be followed by solar panel and reflector deployments and finally the orientation of antennas towards Earth. The spacecraft will acquire the desired station at 74 degrees east in about a week's time, after which payloads can be put on for their performance evaluation. Closing in on 17 minutes into flight in the 5th Area in 5, 2016 is well on its way to success, turning our attention now to SkyMaster 2. It's a huge satellite. It tips the scales at over 6,400 kilograms. SkyMaster 2 is an identical twin to SkyMaster 1 that Arian Space launched on 30 September 2013, or 2015. I called that one into orbit too. And combined, the two satellites are key components in the national broadband network, NBN, whose mission it is to deliver world-class broadband access to every part of the continent and surrounding islands. And that dream can only become a reality for remote regions with the addition of advanced broadband satellite technology. Sporting 101 high-throughput KA band spot, trans spot beams, rather, uh, SkyMaster 2 brings even the most remote regions true broadband connectivity. And as we close in on 18 minutes uh, into the mission, here's more about SkyMaster 2. SkyMuster 2 is NBN's second satellite, built for Australia's broadband network. It is the culmination of NBN's satellite construction program. It was built by SSL, the world's leading manufacturer of commercial satellites, as a follow-on to the SkyMuster 1 satellite. Both high-throughput advanced technology satellites play an important role in the NBN network. The two SkyMuster satellites, in conjunction with an extensive ground network, will deliver high-speed internet services to remote and regional Australians, many of whom have no or little access to internet right now. NBN's goal is to have 12 million Australian homes and businesses ready for service and 8 million premises activated on the NBN network by 2020 and to ensure all Australians have access to high-speed broadband. The mission of NBN to connect people across Australia is one that people can really get behind it fits in with the SSL mission to improve the human experience. SSL has worked closely with NBN in support of their goal, beginning with the build and delivery of SkyMuster 1, which was launched in October 2015. The SkyMuster 1 satellite was launched just over a year ago, and despite being very complex, SSL have delivered us a high quality and highly reliable satellite. Like the first SkyMuster satellite, SkyMuster 2 is based on SSL's robust, flight-proven 1300 platform, which has continually evolved to incorporate innovation and advanced technologies. The 1300 provides the power and capacity needed for service precisely tailored to Australia's geographically varied user distribution. A lot of new development has gone into the SkyMuster satellites, making them some of the largest and most advanced satellites produced. SSL is the leader in providing high-capacity next-generation satellites for broadband internet. And the first SkyMuster satellite is operating well and providing broadband to Australians in regional and remote communities. The fairing of the launch vehicle features artwork by NBN, which is the result of our Blast Your Face into Space competition. This artwork features 700 photos sent in by Australians around the country and includes photos of sporting groups, individuals, 
families, even newborn babies. These represent Australians from all walks of life who will benefit from high-speed internet services that NBN are providing. I would like to thank all of the people at SSL who have contributed to this amazing project and I would like to thank NBN for working with us and we look forward to continuing the relationship. I'd like to thank the people at SSL who've worked on the NBN project. This program has required long hours at times, but all your efforts have paid off and hundreds of thousands of Australians will benefit. NBN's satellite program has been a team effort between SSL, Viasat, Ariana Spas and NBN and it is the dedication of hundreds of engineers, technicians and managers that has made this program a success. As I mentioned earlier, NBN really understands how satellite can change the lives of rural Australians. You may recall that Skymaster One carried that painting by young Bailey Brooks, who lives on a remote cattle ranch and uses satellite for her schooling. Uh, well, for Skymaster 2, they did that Blast Your Face into Space campaign. That's really neat. Some 700 pictures of Australians adorned the fairing tonight as it roared into the heavens. One of them is Sally Cody Cargo. She lives on an isolated farm with her family and primarily wants to be connected to the NBN network. And uh, for safety reasons, she has uh, three kids aged 11, 4, and 3. She'll be able to access, and they will, the educational needs via fast broadband, putting them in the same uh, category as their peers, all because of the folks at NBN. And again, uh, time now to hear a little more about Skymaster 2. A year ago, an Ariane 5 flight VA226 launched NBN's first SkyMuster satellite, marking another complete success for Ariane Spass. SkyMuster 1 was also a milestone achievement for SSL, being the 100th satellite built from 1300 bus, and one of the largest and most complex communications satellites ever built. But for NBN and the people of Australia, the SkyMuster satellites have an even larger significance. SkyMuster 2 will join its sister, SkyMuster 1, in delivering game-changing fast broadband to hundreds of thousands of people in remote and regional areas of Australia who have had limited internet service until now. It is a great pleasure to be here again working with the team in Karoo to launch SkyMuster 2. I would like to sincerely thank the staff at Ariane Spass and their partners, including ASL, ESA, Kness, RUAG and many others, along with SSL, whose hard work and commitment has contributed to achieving NBN's goal. Bravo as well to our own NBN team, who are so proud to be helping to bridge the digital divide. And we hit the 24 minute mark into flight, everything going perfectly. Packing now by Malindi on the east coast of Africa. Another Australian face on the fairing tonight was that of P.T. Rankin. Living on a remote cattle station with her husband and four kids, aged 8, 6, 3, and 1, PT uh, connected to the interim satellite service, the ISS, in December uh, that has been transformational for the Rankin household. Uh, the family now has access to fast broadband due to the NBN network with access to various online tools and entertainment and more details about SkyMaster 2, built by SSL, 6.4 tons, towers 8.5 meters tall. That's 26 feet for those of you in the U.S. Its solar cells can generate almost 16.5 kilowatts of power, and that's at the end of life. The uh, powered uh, portion of the mission tonight is about to end, and the DDO will announce that. Just a moment. Extinction ESC. And there it is, the call from the DDO. The ESC has completed the propulsion stage of the mission. Events begin to happen really rapidly now. We've entered the so-called ballistic stage. The engineers here call it the scar phase, but for us normal people, let's call it the space ballet. The powerful computers on board the Arian 5 are now making the calculations to align the vehicle precisely for the next steps. So we're high enough, 
we're going fast enough, the need for raw power is over, now it's pinpoint precision. We're talking about the real science in rocket science now. The upper brain, or the upper stage has a brain. It's a powerful computer in the vehicle equipment bay called the BEB. And uh, even more than just being a computer, it's a whole flight management system. It makes decisions. It's extremely smart. It takes into effect uh, account information from the fuel tanks, the engines, all of the subsystems. If there are different options, it always chooses the one with the best chance of success for the mission. So the launcher needs to know where it is, where it has to go, and how it gets there. That's called GNC, Guidance, Navigation, and Control. It's one of the primary subsystems of the launcher. And you know I mentioned that Space Systems L'Oreal built both of the SkyMuster satellites. Well, the relationship between Arian Space and SSL of Palo Alto, California, goes back over 30 years. The first SSL bird to fly on Arian was Intelsat F-5-7. That was back in 1983, and all 57 satellites from SSL or its predecessors have been put into orbit by Arian Space. There's four more SSL birds uh, waiting in the hangar to fly on Arian Space. And as I said earlier, Arian 5 built for speed and power, and uh, right now not even Superman could catch Arian 5 at over 9 kilometers uh, per second. The first step of this whole space ballet is to orient the launcher for the release of NBN Sky Muster. And that's Sky Muster 2. That's going to happen in less than a minute. Okay, and it's being done by small rockets on the side of the launcher. Years of work by everybody in Australia and uh, the other uh, players on the team coming down to the next few seconds. A set of springs will eject NBN Sky Muster at exactly the correct moment. And that moment is 28.22 into the mission. So that is about 10 seconds of breath holding for Julia Dickinson and her team right now as Sky Muster 2 is about to be separated. Separation Sky Muster 2. And there it is. While you see smiles here in the audience, uh, there is a long-standing tradition, and that is to hold the applause until both of the satellites have separated. SkyMaster 2 is going to be used by NBN, as we said, to provide broadband services to rural Australians. SkyMaster 2 joins its sister satellite, SkyMaster 1, as two bright stars twinkling in the evening sky over uh, the continent of Australia. Now the next act to the space ballet begins. We've got to turn that composite away from the direction uh, that we just sent SkyMuster to. Then we prepare to jettison the SILDA. That's the black structure. It's like a small fairing. It's the secret sauce that makes dual satellite launches possible here in Kobru. It's protected GSAT-18 and... Uh, uh, it has provided a base to mount SkyMuster 2 on. We want to be sure to send it away from either of the two uh, satellites. And when the SILDA does separate, that's going to happen at about 31 minutes into the flight. So what do we got? Uh, 30 seconds or so away. GSAT-18 will be exposed to space for the first time. The activity, by the way, is being monitored in real time by a number of people following and analyzing key flight data. They report it all here uh, from a place called CBI. It's headed up by Antonine Kuktoa, and uh, they're located on that big hill right behind us here at Jupiter. And uh, they're sending down the data down here, and we are closing in. Again, on the, next, on the next big event, that's the separation of that SILDA. It's going to occur at 30 minutes and 43 seconds, high over the uh, Indian Ocean. Uh, so, uh, again, we're about 10 seconds away from uh, seeing that black structure separate off and uh, go on its way into the void 
uh, of space. Here comes the call. Separation du système, lancement double Ariane. And right on time, the Silva has separated, and GSAT 18 sees the sun for the very first time. We're now about uh, 1,700 kilometers above the Indian Ocean. We're going eight and a half kilometers uh, per second, and that's more than eight times the speed of a bullet. And yet another act of the space ballet has to happen now. The onboard computers are calculating the exact course change necessary for dropping off GSAT-18. Obviously, we don't want it bumping into SkyMaster-2 or the SILDA. Rocket science and orbital physics underway now. 3228 is the magic number to look for. That is just under a minute now of breath holding by our friends at ISRO. They've been through it so many times with us before, and they know that Arion is about to deliver for them uh, again with another success. Uh, the space ballet continues the separation of GSAT-18 again, less than 30 seconds from right now. And you see the uh, faces of everybody waiting, the officials from GSAT-18. They've put, uh, in some cases, much of their career into building the satellite that's 10 seconds away from going on its mission into geostationary transfer orbit, ultimately bringing great service to And Plus there it is. And now the applause can uh, happen in the fist pumping. Mission success again for Ariane Space. Number 542 and 543. We did it for Skymuster 2 and for ISRO with... Uh, at GSAT 18. The mighty Arian 5 has now recorded 74 successes in a row. What's really amazing is how Arian Space and its partners uh, can make it all look so routine. If you think about it, uh, many of the parts of that magnificent machine we just saw fly were built in Europe. They were delivered thousands of miles by two specialized boats. The satellites arrived via massive cargo planes into Cayenne, French Guiana. They were then put on very special trucks. They were hauled about 60 kilometers up here uh, to Carveru. And then a full month of work to test, integrate, and prepare for launch. And they make it look so easy because they do it exactly the same way every single time consistency pays off. And that's why you see Everybody hugging and everybody having a great time. And it's going to be a party tonight in the Amazon jungle here in Karu uh, because Aryan Space has delivered again. Uh, again, the undisputed champion of the heavyweight launch industry and uh, the dual payload champion uh, for sure. And there you see all of the different uh, staff had a real nice visit with Julia Dickinson yesterday from NBN. Uh, about uh, their plans down there. Of course, the company I work for, uh, Viasat, was heavily involved uh, in that project. Uh, but uh, again, for our folks at ISRO and NBN, uh, it's been uh, a, an incredible evening. Stefan Israel, the chairman and CEO of uh, Arian Space, will be making his way to the podium uh, shortly to begin a series of speeches. Meanwhile, enjoy these replays from uh, half an hour or so ago. Look at all the handshakes going on, the excitement down here in the fishbowl, as they call it, at Karu. That massive machine, 780 tons worth of hardware powering off the pad. 1,300 tons of thrust. Look at that picture. Watch these all night long as the Ariane 5 ECA just tears off the pad, heads uh, into the sky over Kuru. And Chamber of Commerce evening here tonight, too. Just unbelievable. Very, very hot today. Very hot. 
but uh, no rain, perfect weather. Results in all these people having a great evening. I've said it so many times before, people describe it like uh, having a baby uh, because it literally, some of these people have worked the better part of their career to make it all happen. And it all came to fruition in a half an hour of holding your breath and watching Arian 5 do what it does so well, which is deliver and deliver successfully. And that's why those people come from all over the world and entrust billions of euros worth of hardware to Ariane Space to launch a for Julia Dickinson on the phone, I'm sure, back to Australia, talking to the NBN people, the Israel folks, talking back, checking in with India, officials there. And again, very shortly, Stefan Israel will make his way to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, so we are delighted uh, to announce that uh, SkyMaster 2 and GSAT 18 have been separated as planned on the targeted standard geostationary transfer orbit. It is now the fifth time this year that Ion 5 has performed flawlessly. And you know that this launch celebrates as well its 74th successful launch in a row, now equaling Ion 4. Well done. Tonight, Ion 5 serves two major nations with whom Ion Space enjoys strong relationships. Indeed, the first passenger, SkyMaster 2, is the second satellite launched by Ion Space for the Australian National Broadband Network operator NBN. It's been only a year since we launched SkyMaster 1. It is also the eighth Australian satellite launched by Ion Space since 1987. So let me express my warmest wishes to NBN CEO Bill Moreau, as well to John Simon and Jean-Baptiste Rousselot. I have the feeling that Jean-Baptiste is a little bit French, who are with us tonight. Congratulations also to our long-standing partner, Space System Loral. We have four more uh, GTO satellites to launch with SSL, so I want to thank uh, John Selly and the whole SSL, SSL team in Palo Alto, and uh, to say how pleased we are to have David Bernstein with us tonight in CSG. For sure, another special partner of Ariane Space is ISRO. ISRO has tonight entrusted its 20th satellite to our space vehicles since our launch of the Apple spacecraft 35 years ago in 1981. It was on the third Ariane. Ion Space is very proud of his, this very strong relationship with India. We have announced three weeks ago the signature of a new contract with ISRO. It was GSAT 11. And we are now on track to deliver twice for ISRO in 2017 with GSAT 11 and GSAT 17. So I want to thank ISRO for your trust. Congratulations also to ISRO for the outstanding successes of Indian PSLV and GSLV launchers this year. We have been honored to welcome to this launch uh, ISRO chairman, Mr. Kiran Kumar, as well as His Excellency Mohan Kumar, India's ambassador to France. They have now had to uh, leave uh, to France and uh, to India for ISRO chairman, but they were with us for this launch. I want also to thank Mr. Kuni Krishnan, who is the director of the Indian Space Center, SDSC, who is with, with us tonight. So we for sure hope that we can continue this very strong partnership with ISRO. So ladies and gentlemen, as I have said, this fifth flight of IN5 of the year is also the 74th successes in a row. It equals IN4's record of consecutive successes. During 14 years of service without any anomaly, Ariane 5 has put into orbit 145 spacecraft for a total weight of more than 623 tons. I want to pay our tribute and to congratulate all Ariane partners for this outstanding track record. ISA and all the member states of the Ariane program whose support is absolutely crucial for success. Airbus Safran launchers and all the European industry Airbus Safran Launcher is, as you know, Ariane 5 Prime and is now 
our first shareholder of Ariane Space. With ISA and ISL, we are also happy to remark that tonight's mission is not quite over. An, experiment, an experimentation is currently at work on the tank in order to contribute to the development of the future Ariane 6 launcher. You know that we are waiting Ariane 6 a lot, and uh, this launcher should be confirmed now, no later than early November, and we will be very happy to launch it in 2020. I want to thank CNES, both Qualification Authority for Ariane 5 and our daily partner here in CSG. It is the first launch we make with uh, DDFEV, and we are very happy uh, of our partnership. I want to thank also all our contractors in French Guyana and all employees of the launch facility. And last but not least, I would like to pay my tribute to all our Ariane Space colleagues for their outstanding professionalism and achievements and for the success of this eighth launch of the year. So I now would like to welcome uh, on stage our customers and partners. Thank you very much. Oui, comme le disait Stéphane, je suis un peu, voire même beaucoup français. Mais, uh, yes, as Stéphane said, I'm French, but I'm also Australian and have been for 20 years. So I will be speaking in English for my colleagues in Australia. I would like to welcome you here tonight. Good morning, and a very special good morning on this successful day. Um, I'm JB Rousselot, and I'm the Chief Network and Operations Officer for NBN. On behalf of the company, I'm delighted uh, with the successful launch of SkyMaster 2. Um, launching satellites is never um, certain, as was shown yesterday, um, but the second uh, successful launch is a huge relief for us, and indeed something that all at NBN and in Australia are very proud of. Um, an amazing amount of work has gone into this moment. Countless number of people from across the Pacific uh, and indeed in the world have worked tirelessly to get us to this successful launch. Today is also a special day for us as it really marks Australia's confirmation as a key world player in the delivery of broadband uh, via satellite. SkyMaster 1 and 2 deliver broadband to the outback, uh, which Australia has a very special uh, cultural link to. The outback, while uh, sparsely populated, contributes huge prosperity to the country, uh, and NBN services will help the primary industries uh, in the outback uh, to operate more profitably and more successfully. New services will be able to be offered uh, in business, uh, in education, in health, and in social services. Once the service is fully operational, uh, the, satellite NB the NBN National Sur uh, Satellite Service will truly transform the broadband experience in the outback. Uh, it will deliver fast, reliable service to outback and rural Australians, with many new communities being connected for the very first time. I'd like to congratulate uh, our NBN satellite team. They've done an amazing job uh, delivering on a very complex international project uh, on time and on budget. I'd also would like to thank our uh, partners on this launch, uh, SSL, uh, Ariane Espace, uh, and Viasat. We couldn't have picked a better team, and we thank you for your hard work and dedication. Uh, un grand merci en particulier à Stéphane Israël. Uh, very special thanks to Stéphane Israel and the teams of Ariane Espace here in France and in Kourou. And congratulations for this 74th success in a row. Um, I'd like to also congratulate our uh, co-passengers, the, uh, the uh, Indian Space Research Organization, for the launch of their GSAT-18 satellite, and we wish them all the best. Uh, today's launch of uh, SkyMaster 2 is neither the beginning nor the end uh, of here we go. <laughs> it's neither the beginning nor the end of the story. There's already many Australians that are enjoying the service of our first satellite, uh, but there are many more waiting patiently. Uh, we still need to position, to commission, uh, and to test the satellite because, before we can uh, declare it fully operational. Uh, we'll also continue to work with our delivery partner to make sure that we connect more Australians around the continent. Uh, and to uh, finish this speech, we'd like to uh, play a couple of words from our CEO, Bill Morrow, who unfortunately could not be with us tonight. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, what a day it is. You know, 
I, I first need to congratulate all of you. I want to start with our partners. If you think about what SSL does, they are so good at constructing and building these satellites. This is the second one for us. I want to thank and congratulate Viasat for putting that ground station, that equipment, that technology into the ground, and of course the modems into our customers' homes, and of course Arian Space for yet another successful launch. You guys are just amazing that you consistently get this thing right. Um, so we are incredibly grateful here at NBN. Now I need to also call out special mention to the NBN satellite project team. You guys are just incredible. You impress me every day. The fact that you have project managed this for the second time through for another success, I think it's just fabulous. Now, of course, I would love to be there with you in the French Guiana. Uh, I am in Palo Alto right now at the operations center that will take control of the satellite, as you know, uh, once you guys are done with it. And we're thrilled about uh, being able to see that actually in action. Um, now, I would like to say a little bit more about what this means for our country. Uh, the idea of us uh, building a satellite, building the ground equipment, having it talk to each other to give people broadband is, of course, one way to look at this. But it means so much more. We have to recognize that there are 400,000 homes and businesses that are very remote that are going to be served by this technology. And it's going to change their lives. It's going to change their businesses like there's never been. If you think about the idea of children, there's roughly 20,000 children in this area that just the simple element of education alone, you know, many of these children have to rely on school of the air, which is an audible broadcast of a lecture that they have to have. They haven't had the benefit of what probably you and I have had of being in a classroom with other children and having an interactive session with teachers. That's all changing now because of this technology. What we're enabling those children to do has to hit right at home in the heart. And on top of that, we're helping these young farms actually be more successful. Many of them care deeply about what they do. It's been handed down for generations, but they struggle. Uh, by this, using this technology, we can lower their operating costs. We can give them higher market reach. We can help them be more successful. So the fact that we're all a part of this, I just, again, uh, it warms my heart. I want to thank all of you. And I would also like to offer a special recognition and congratulations to our Indian partners who had the passenger satellite to go up with us. I think uh, it's great that we are both changing each other's countries in the way that we are with this technology. Having said that, we wish you, we wish you all a great time. I hope you can celebrate well, and we'll look forward to seeing the team back in Sydney. It's always good to be here in Karoo. I want to start by congratulating NPN on the launch of SkyMuster 2. This is the second satellite that we built and helped launch for them. Uh, the first one over a year ago is now fully in orbit operationally and operating wonderfully from what we hear. So we're quite proud of that at, at SSL. I also want to thank Arion Space. As Stefan mentioned, Arion Space and SSL have been, long been partners in uh, putting satellites into orbit. This is the fifth geosynchronous satellite that we've launched with Arion this year. We've got two more to go this year, so this is going to be a big year for both companies together. So good work, guys, and, and thank you for all, all your, your work. Our teams work perfectly together. Um, while we're sitting here, while the folks here are busy uh, relaxing and celebrating after completing the launch, we have a large team back in Palo Alto that's working on getting control of the satellite and taking it through everything that needs to be done to get it from where it is now to the final orbitable position, and then being able to get it fully operational so NBN can take over. Uh, I've gotten a message from them. They're starting to receive singles from the spacecraft, so we're quite happy to be able to report that to everyone. Uh, we've got a good satellite up there. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank NBN for putting their trust in us about four years ago uh, and giving us the opportunity to build two beautiful spacecraft for them spacecraft that uh, really move the technology forward, uh, <clears throat> but perhaps more importantly, spacecraft that are going to have a key part in helping their country, in helping to bridge the digital divide, and improving the human experience. So thank you.
Chairman and CEO of Arian Space, Mr. Stephen Israel, and all the dignitaries present over here from NBN, SSL, Kenneth, and ESA, good evening to all of you. I consider it a great honor that I am here to relay the message of Chairman Isro, Indian Space Research Organization, and Secretary, Department of Space, India, Mr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, who was here till lift off and a few minutes later, but he had to urgently rush back home to attend some pressing official work back home in India. Quote, now I will be reading the message of the chairman. I am really delighted this evening having witnessed another glorious and flawless liftoff of Ariane VA-231 flight that carried India's GSAT-18 satellite along with its co-passenger SkyMaster 2 successfully. Like on all previous occasions, Arian Space has provided us yet again a magnificent textbook launch. I congratulate and compliment Mr. Stephen Israel and his team for this. I would also like to congratulate NBN team for the successful launch of SkyMaster 2 satellite, which is to provide critical broadband services in Australia in coming days. Arian Space has been our launch partner for many years. In fact, our association with Arian Space started way back in 1981 with the launch of Apple satellite and today, they have launched our 20th mission. I do not have any hesitation to say that during all these launch campaigns, our teams have received excellent support from Arian Space and CSG for preparing the satellites for the launch. The next steps after the successful launch of GSAT-18 are to carry out series of maneuvers before positioning it in its orbital location. The necessary preparations have been made, and our team back in India is working on mission operations at the Master Control Facility, Hassan. GSAT-18 is an important satellite for us that will enable the continuity of the vital communication services in our country by replacing the currently aging satellites. Television, telecommunication, VSATs, and digital satellites news gathering are few of the services that the GSAT-18 will support in coming days. Back in India, we have two more satellites, GSAT-17 and GSAT-11 getting ready for the launch by Arian vehicle during early next year. And realization of both these satellites is in advanced stage. While GSAT-17 is an important satellite for replacing our satellites, GSAT-11 will be the first generation of high-throughput satellites of ISRO. Both of these upcoming launches are crucial for the Indian space program, and I am sure that Arian Space, as ever, will continue to provide its best possible services to us in launching these satellites. Once again, I thank the Arian Space for providing us a spectacular launch of GSAT-18 satellite. Unquote. That is the end of Chairman's message, uh, our beloved Chairman, CS Kiran Kumar. And before I leave the podium, on behalf of Team GSAT-18, I have just one sentence to say. Messi Boku Arian Space, Messi Boku Guyani Space Center, and Messi Boku Airbus Safton Launchers for this wonderful launch. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And on my personal behalf, Dhanyabad GSAT 18 team and Team ISRO for this successful launch. And I wish all our team back home a very successful mission operations ahead in the next few days to come. This evening will remain in the memories of all GSAT 18 team forever in our life. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, so it's now time to conclude uh, this uh, evening. Um, I should say that uh, our next launch will be very important as well because it will be for uh, uh, the Galileo program from uh, the European Commission and ESA with four satellites for the first time on board of an Ariane 5 ES. It will be on November 17th. All is uh, ready now for this uh, launch in terms of qualification of the launcher and uh, to the environment of the satellite. But uh, we are uh, for sure uh, very well uh, uh, preparing this mission, which would be absolutely key for uh, Europe. So thank you very much to uh, all, of, uh, all of you, to our uh, customers and partners. And now enjoy uh, the end of the evening. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you.
Well, my friends, another incredible Marion 5 mission has come to an end. This was the 74th success in a row, and it's with great pride that we can say that over 60% of all commercial satellites in orbit worldwide have been launched from uh, this spectacular facility in the Amazon jungle. <laughs> For the world's number one and launch services provider, Harry on Space, I'm Harry Thibodeau, bidding you good night from Koru, French Guiana.